Today, we're going to be covering two different methods of hyperparameter tuning within Scikit-Learn and also Python. Those are grid search CV and also randomized search CV. And that CV stands for cross-validation. Now, essentially, what we're going to be working on is each machine learning model has different parameters that you could put inside. And at like a very basic level, if you're familiar with a KNN model, well, you can choose like N neighbors. And there's a few different options you could have. I mean, you can do like three nearest neighbors or five or seven. Essentially what hyperparameter tuning allows you to do is choose a few different values for that parameter and test to see which one is the most accurate. And this is actually pretty simple to do and super effective when you're trying to get a more accurate model. So let's jump on my computer right now and start coding. All right, so we have a brand new Jupyter Notebook over here. Let's import in some libraries. So first thing I'm gonna do is import in both pandas and numpy. So import pandas as pd, import numpy as np. I'm gonna shift and enter. This creates a brand new cell down below. And then this runs it from above. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is bring in some data. Now I will caveat, I did grab this code straight from chat GTP, but I will explain how this works. Sometimes it is faster just to use the program. Uh, so that way you don't have to think. And also at the same time, you don't make any errors with your code. And I'm also gonna show you what this data frame looks like so we can explain this code. So one of my favorite hobbies is running and the Boston Marathon is considered kind of like one of the holy grails of running races, at least here in America. So essentially what I built out a data frame based around is runners with their miles per week, the farthest run, and if they ended up qualifying for the Boston Marathon. Because if you're a male, I think it's under like 34, you have to run under three hours and that doesn't even guarantee you a spot. So it's like very tough to get into this race. So we have the miles per week and the farthest run. So that here's how this data uh, was broken out. So first I looked at just like average marathon runners and a lot of different training plans are between like 40, 50 or 60 miles per week. So I put the mean in this data set as 55, standard deviation of 10, and there's 500 samples. So that's how this is built out over here. Up next, right? So I don't really expect people to finish a marathon if they're running less than 30 miles per week. Is there some? Yes, there is. They might be walking or they barely finish, but I put the low minimum at 30 and I put the max at 120. Now there are marathon runners that do run over 120 miles. A lot of elites do, but for this, I decided like there's no elites. So I put the max at 120. Could have put it higher, sure, yeah, but 120 it is, right? And then next, I wanted to take a look at the farthest run before a marathon. So a lot of people will not run farther than a marathon distance before their marathon. Now I will caveat, there are ultra marathoners that potentially could uh, run a marathon later down in the season. And I'm an ultra guy, so that is possible, but a lot of ultra marathoners don't wanna run just full straight road marathon. So that's why I capped this one out at 26. Also, uh, if you're training for a marathon, you wanna have at least a half marathon in and half marathons 13.1 miles. I just put 12 over here. So maybe a little bit less, but either way. And then the last thing I also put in here too, is if someone uh, runs more miles per week, more likely to qualify for the Boston Marathon. And that's what this code uh, determines over here. And then I just renamed all the different columns, right? Miles per week for this, and then built out the data frame. So a lot faster, just telling chat GTP or what specifically you need, and then it'll output some code. You can tweak it a little bit to your liking, and that's where we get this data at. And you can feel free to copy this code. I think I'm gonna put it down below in the comment section. So just go down there, copy it. Okay, so now we have our data frame. Uh, next thing we need to do, I'm gonna build out a bunch of cells and we're gonna need to define our X and Y. So in machine learning, uh, you tend to put capital X. So I'm just gonna put df.i lock so we can grab our specific columns that we want. So I wanna grab these two columns over here, miles per week and also the farthest to run. So we'll put zero and two on this side of things. And I also need a comma over here. Otherwise I'm gonna have a little bit of issues later. Then we need to set our Y. So DF the I lock, right? And we're just grabbing the very end. So just comma two on this side of things. And we're good there. We have X and Y. Now we can train, test, split. And if you're not familiar with train, test, split, I don't recommend watching this video because you have a lot of learning to do. But um, we're gonna put from SK learn 
dot model selection import train test split. And speaking of that, I have a full series on machine learning videos, especially SciKit right now. So check that out if you're not familiar with train test split. Okay, so now we're gonna set x train x test y train y test right and we're gonna say that's equal to train test split we're gonna put our capital x our lowercase y we're gonna do a random state so random state this time i have to do 26 for the marathon distance and we're gonna do a test size we'll do like 0 0.3 because we don't have a lot of data here and we have that running okay next thing we need to do is call our um, machine learning model. Now I'm going to do a random forest classifier full video talking about it, but like a small 15 to 30 second summary. Essentially what this does is it takes a look at binary trees. Think of like yes, no, or zero one. Then there's a bunch of different binary trees. Essentially they all come to a vote at the very end. And then that majority vote is the outcome of the random forest. And we're going to be using specifically the random forest classifier. So let's import that in. So from SK learn ensemble import random forest classifier. Okay. Now it's imported in over here. Build a few more cells. Let's call it. So typically you see RF for random forest classifier. So random forest classifier. Okay. Great. Next step is we're going to start working on our parameter grid. So uh, with this random forest classifier, you'll see that I didn't put anything in here and none of the parameters. Well, we're going to be using a parameter grid. And before we even build this out, I just want to show you guys where you can actually find all the different parameters. So one of the things I think is really cool is scikit-learn has a ton of documentation. So you can see over here, right, random forest classifier, which we ended up calling right there. So it tells you how you call it. And then it has all the different types of parameters you could throw in there. And the best part is over here, it talks about each of the parameters, right? Like N estimators, number of trees in the forest, criterion, genie, entropy, log loss, default, right? It tells you the defaults, all the different type of stuff in here. Um, and there's a lot to go over. I cannot go over all these in one specific video. So I highly recommend that you check out the documentation, figure out what you would want to put in when you're doing a parameter tuning. Uh, but that is over here. Make sure to check the documentation. Uh, so I am going to build out this perimeter grid. Uh, we're going to be doing a random a little bit later on the grid search, but we're going to do a normal grid search first. So I will be commenting out a few different things in here, but I will tell you exactly why. So a parameter grid equals, and we're going to build this out in here and view enters. So first thing we're going to do is our estimators. So n estimators, right? Put this over here and make sure you follow the same exact formatting that I do. So that way it works properly. I'm just going to do 500, 1,000, not 100, and 1,500, comma, and then we'll build out this next line. And this one's actually going to be commented out at the end, uh, but I'm going to say criterion. And we're just going to do the two. I know there's three in there, but... Uh, we're going to be entropy and then also our default one. Okay. Then we're going to do min samples split. Make sure you put the single quotes around it because I did not. Right. And then we'll say like 5, 10, 15. Then we're going to do min samples leaf do like one two and four and lastly we'll do like max depth and we'll do like 10 20 and also 30. now the reason why i'm going to comment a few of these out well let me build out this next line next two lines and then i'll show you well, I'm going to comment a few of these out first. So let's actually import in our grid search. So this is your typical normal version of grid search from sklearn.model selection imports 
grid search C and V. Okay. And now let's do grid search like this equals grid search CV. And then we're going to put our few different parameters in here. And I'm just going to build this out like this just because they will go a little bit long and I don't want anything cutting off. So first thing we're going to do is import in our model. Uh, so we called random forest earlier RF. So we'll just put RF over here, comma, I'm going to go to the next line. Uh, next, we're going to put in our parameter grid. So I'm just going to copy and paste it because I am lazy. Okay. Next, we need to talk about our cross validation. And this is where I'm going to show you why I'm going to comment a few of these things out. So I'm just going to put a CV equals two. And then here's why. Okay. For everything in your parameter grid, you're going to have to multiply these across and then multiply it by this cross validation at the end. So like if we have this right now, we're going to take three times two, which is six, right? Not bad times another three, 18, times another three, 54, right? And then times three, which on top of my head, I think is 162. And then you're gonna have to times this by two at the area end. Um, so what's it, 328? That's a lot to go through. And honestly, my computer might not be able to handle it. In fact, my video sometimes lags. So I'm gonna comment a few of these out. So the number goes less. So criterion, we're gonna do that a little bit later. And then also max depth, we'll do that a little bit later. And just so this doesn't bug out, I'm going to put a right here. So now we're going to be taking a look at three times three, right? Which is nine, pretty simple times three again, 27 times two, 54. And that way it also loads a little bit faster. You guys don't have to wait uh, for that to go through. So, okay. Uh, next we have scoring. I'm just going to put accuracy over here and there's a few different other scoring methods that you can choose, but I will decide to put that over here. And lastly, uh, one thing to speed this up is end jobs. Uh, so I'm going to put that equal to negative one. And again, that just loads this a little bit faster on your computer. So there's everything that I want to put in here. I'm going to shift and enter. And we do have an issue. Let's see. A uh, param grid is not defined. And that's because I did not call this over here. So make sure you do that before here. And now we don't have this issue. Great. So you might be wondering how we work this, right? So it's just like a model. We're going to have to fit our data. So this time we're just going to put grid search dot fit. And then I'll put in here X train and then also Y train. So now this loaded over here, right? Grid search. And you can see everything that was put in here, the parameter wise, right? Samples split leaf and also the end estimators or end job or scoring accuracy right and we have our random force classifier under here so great everything is working so now i'm going to take a look at the best score i'm also going to build a few new cells down below so all you have to do is grid search the best score and then an underscore at the end uh, so we actually got a 0 0.8371 which isn't too bad uh, next, I want to see the best parameters. So again, just put grid search over here and then you're going to do dot best params and then it's going to output what worked the best. So min samples leaf one, min samples split five and estimators 1500. So that worked the best. Awesome. Okay, so finished with the best parameters and score. So this was your normal version of grid search CV. It runs through everything. Now we're going to be taking a look at a randomized version. So I'm going to just comment over here, randomized like this. And now we need to actually import in another thing because we can't just use grid search CV. So I'm going to copy this code over here and then I'm going to get rid of this grid search CV. So this time you're going to put randomized search CV. You're going to do a shift and enter and that is imported. Now I'm even going to comment or grab this parameter grid over here. We are going to throw this back over here and I'm going to get rid of all these comments. Also, before that, I'm going to add in a few new cells. Okay, so get rid of all these pound or hashtags. However, you want to take a look at this. So that way we have our param grid. And I'm going to change the name on this one. I'm going to say random param grid. So now this is imported. And I'll show you why uh, we're going to be using all these a little bit later. Okay, so now what we're going to be taking a look at is the randomized search. So what you're going to put over here is randomized or we'll say random 
grid search because I think the other one we just called grid search, right? Yeah, grid search. So we'll put that equals, and then we're gonna copy this, right? The randomized search CV, just that text, or you can type it out if you want, but I'm just gonna copy this. And then like earlier, I'm just gonna put this out over here. Okay, so now again, we're gonna do our random force. So RF, and then we're gonna grab in our random parameter grid. So we're gonna put this over here, okay? Next, we're doing our cross validation. So we're gonna say CV equals five. And you might be wondering, well, that's a lot higher than uh, here, right? This time we put two, um, but why are you putting five here and none of the comments? Well, uh, this is gonna go through 50 different random results. Uh, earlier, right, everything in here multiplies across. This time it's just five times 10, right? Uh, five folds and then also 10 candidates. So we have that CV over here, okay? Scoring is gonna be the same. So we're gonna put scoring equals and we'll put accuracy like that comma here at the end then we'll also put n jobs equals negative one and then we can also put a random state so i'm going to say random state equals 26 uh, because we were still in the marathon nude and i'm gonna clean that up a little bit over here okay hopefully no errors no typos looks like it worked great and like earlier we're gonna have to fit our data again. So just dot fit, we can put X train for here, then also Y train. Okay, so we have our randomized search and this time you can see this has been expanded with all of our different parameters, right? Random state, all this just like above. Okay, awesome. Now what we're gonna do is see our score. So we're just gonna copy, oops, we're gonna copy this one over here. And exactly the same, right? We're gonna do dot best score, score like there. And you can see 0 0.79. And then we're gonna put our best params and see what it gives us. Whoops, we'll do best params, right? And estimator is 1,000, 5, 1, 30, and then also Gini or Gini or however you pronounce it on that side of things. So I just to recap how specifically this works, there's two methods that I use for hyperparameter tuning. We have our normal version over here, right? Our grid search, and then we have another version which is our randomized grid search. Now, if you're gonna be using your normal version of grid search, everything that you put in your parameter grid is gonna multiply across as well as your cross validation here at the end. Um, so it can slow down your computer quite a bit if you build in a bunch of different parameters in here or a bunch of different numbers or um, categories specific like this criterion. And the randomized search is a little bit different, right? Uh, you're taking a look at your cross validation over here, five times 10, and you can put whatever parameters that you want essentially on this side of things. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you didn't make sure to subscribe to the channel as these videos take quite a while to make, also, I'm uploading over three videos each week focused on data science and machine learning. By the way, you should go check out this video series right over here for even more machine learning videos.